Hi y'all, Mike Peace. In the first video, uh, we talked about designing the urn, sizing the urn, and turning the urn. In this uh, second video, we are going to deal with making the collar, making the lid, making the PVC uh, threads. If you missed the first video, there will be a link at the end of this, this video. I looked around the plumbing department of my local home development uh, store and I found these uh, plumbing parts. It's called a uh, one and a half inch PVC DWV spigot and clean out adapter with a plug uh, as shown in the picture here. It only costs a couple of bucks. Uh, the, the, my local development store didn't have them out of ABS plastic which is black which I think I would have preferred for most uh, most urns, especially darker wood, but I think the white will look fine in this lighter color uh, urn that I'm making. If you've got any better thoughts of, of some type of plumbing uh, plumbing item, you know, please leave them in the link below. You know, th this is not, my way is not the only way. It may not be the best way, uh, but it's it's a way that works for me. But I appreciate a, a dissenting views of, or, or suggestions for something better to help me and the other viewers. So feel free. Feel, free to leave your comments and suggestions and questions in the show notes below. So here are the components of the collar and the threaded assembly. We've got a, uh, I'm using a piece of oak about five inch uh, diameter that's going to be for the bottom bottom collar. Uh, for the top I'm using a thicker piece of oak because it's got to uh, provide the enough wood for the top and for this uh, tenon that's going to uh, carry the threads. So I'm going to take these threads and put it on that tenon. I'm going to shape this and put those, those threads inside the collar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the first uh, three threads or so off of, off of the plug. And I'm going to do that by putting the square ends in between the chuck jaws, trying to get them very carefully centered. But I'm pushing it back and registering on the back and not squeezing too hard, just firmly. We're going to cut off the first three, three threads. I'm, not, I'm keeping the speed down so it's not overheat the uh, PVC. Okay, when I parted it off, what I discovered, I was about one, sh uh, left it about one thread too long, and therefore I parted through some of this thicker, uh, thicker part uh, that still needs to come off. So I've got to figure out a way to resolve that. So I picked up one of the spindle scraps out of my box that I urge y'all to keep for these such occasions. Never can tell. Slight, slight uh, chamfer toward the front, and let's see if that'll fit on. Yep. And then I'm, I'm thinking I can, I can just bang this on. This PVC will, it'll hit that shoulder, and it should hold it just fine. Yeah, that's running true. So now I'm going to just, just take off that. Let me reevaluate. One, two, three threads. Okay, I think I'm going to cut through the middle of that, that last thread. I'm going to pick the speed up just a bit. It's kind of grabby. off a little bit at a time. Let to stretch it if you will. And I've got a nice smooth smooth shot. Okay, that's nice and snug. 
All right, now I'm going to use a parting tool, again with the idea that the smaller the tool, the less friction. I'm going to start with a small parting tool and then I can do some final cleanup with something bigger. Let's see what it's looking like. Okay, I just about removed the hub. Now I'm going to go ahead, since I don't have as much takeoff, I'm going to use the beading and parting tool to just kind of kind of clean clean that up. Okay, nice and smooth. Got just a little tiny little little chip out there. Now I'm going to come in with just the corner uh, beading and parting tool, put a couple of small grooves that'll help lock the epoxy that's going to to hold this in place. So I'll have a nice mechanical fit. So I'm just going to touch touch this. Okay. Now I'm going to use the beading and parting tool. I think I'll come back and give a little bit of breathing room here to keep it from overheating. This stuff is a mess. Before I get too tangled up, I'm going to clean off some of that mess. I drill a small pilot hole in the collar because it's going to assist me in centering this when I go to putting it on a face plate or glue. So we're going to use some hot melt glue by putting a bead around the outside, a couple of beads. And then we're going to center this with the cone live center. Make sure we've got good, good support. And that ought to take care of it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this round and then we're going to round over the shoulder. Now I've got this at, oh, about 1200. It's a pretty small spindle. Okay, nice and round. Now then I've got to uh, look at my diagram. There's a fair amount of this collar, uh, at, at least this amount, that's going to be below the surface. So my round over is only going to be, oh, what's that, maybe 3 eighths of an inch. Let's just, uh, let's describe that. Don't know how long it'll last. So I'm just going to come up with this edge of this small 3 8 inch bowl gouge. And I'm not going to come in much more than 3 8 to start that turn. Hey, if this small work, I really like this very steep grind. Pretty steep grind. It's a U-shaped. And let's just come on around here. Okay. I'm liking that. Now, the next thing, we're going to um, open this up for this, this piece right here. So it's going to actually fit down inside that, that opening. I probably should measure that and scribe it a little bit better. 
So I've got that scribed. Okay. Now I'm just going to use that uh, bowl gouge, I think, open this up a little bit, and then I'll come in straight with a flat, flat scraper. Now this is uh, cross grain. It's just like hollowing a bowl, so you're going to go from large to small. And on that entry cut, you want to brace, you want to come in there with that thing, perp the uh, bevel perpendicular to the wood, and brace your finger so it doesn't skip out on you. I can hear a little bit of vibration, so it's going to about to pop into that hole on the back side. And there we go. Well, we, you can see that hole popping through. Kind of get a feel for how far. Cause I want this to be a snug, snug fit that, that will hold well with glue. So I'm going to use the box scraper. It's got that, that kind of profile. And I'm coming in on this left side that's sharpened and the front is sharpened. This is not a negative rake scraper, so I need to incline it just a little bit. And that looks almost almost perfect okay I've got this rounded over nicely uh, I've got this hole uh, worked out and actually before I take it off I think I'm going to put just a couple of grooves down inside that collar again for a mechanical fit I use my pyramid tool and just make a couple of little marks in there and that's all it takes Next, I've got to take this off with that glue, and uh, I'm going to try something that I haven't tried before. They never, never try anything new in a, in a demo, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to use a burn wire, and I've got a little rounded edge there that it'll fit into, and let's just see if it cuts through it. Well, nope, destroyed my nichrome, nichrome bur burn wire. Okay, just going to put a chisel in there and give it a pop. I've got a very wide chisel here that uh, ought to handle. Oh, yeah, and it's just coming right off. Maybe because I burned part way through it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, next we're going to take this off, this glue block, throw it back in my spindle spare glue block pile. We're going to use. these standard jaws to register this thing against and open it up just not too tight and now I'm going to come in and put a shoulder on this thing uh, how big a shoulder is an indication of how big a hole I can have in my hollow form so to some extent the bigger the better because it makes it easier to hollow and I'm just going to mark this just so I have a feel for it. And I think I'm going to go, yeah, right about there. Let's just, let's just clean off the bottom here with a scraper, clean some of that glue off. Kind of round off that bottom a little bit there, that inside edge. And then I'm going to come in with the 3 8 inch bowl gouge and just start bringing this, sorry, wrong tool, and start bringing this in.
And now I want this to be slightly concave so when it slit, sits on top of the, uh, the urn, the outside edges will contact it uh, first. Because that's real important. So I'm going to come in here, come down just a little bit more. Just very slightly. And I've got this, the depth of this collar, just about the thickness that I want the urn to be. Uh, so it'll look nice when you look inside it. So I've got my collar done. Just a quick tip, if you want to flatten a, a surface on a lathe, glue you a piece of sandpaper to some uh, uh, machined wood such as MDF, turn it at a slow speed, and if you just hold it in there, move it around a little bit, it will get that surface absolutely flat. And the reason I'm telling you this is because we're going to use the same technique for uh, a glue block putting the... Uh, putting the top on here and I want this flat for the glue. Okay, I've got I've got the top glued to that same scrap block. I just faced it off. Now we're the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it round. Okay, that's nice and round. Now this is going to be the bottom. You can see where I've drawn this circle. That's going to be the rough outline of the tenon that we're going to put our threaded sleeve on. Uh, so I've got to take it take it down to there, uh, and we probably are going to take it down. I'm trying to think about how thick this top is going to be. I've got this this diagram, which gives us a rough idea. And actually, this wood's probably a little thicker than I need. Yeah, I think that that's uh, pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable right there. Okay. So now we're going to come in there with a bowl gouge, just like we did before. And take it in. And again, we're going to slightly concave it. Okay, now, so I start just a bit of a chamfer there. Back this off. Okay, looks like it's just fitting over that chamfer. So now, now we just want to make sure we're pretty doggone careful here in getting that to fit. And so before we do, I think I want to go ahead and finish flushing this in so I don't damage that area. Because these threads, these threads are going to fit right up against that wall like that. So let me take care of this. Take our ruler and see. And I think we're doing a pretty good job. We need just a little bit. I'm going to mark the high spots here. Just a little bit here. That's a high spot. So we're going to mark each side of that high spot. Because we know as soon as we touch the high spot, the, that pencil mark is going to be gone.
that's perfect all right now all we need to do is get this pretty much squared up i think we've pretty much got the almost got a perfect fit so i'm going to just come in here And then as before, we're going to take our point tool and make just a few little grooves to help hold it. Hold the glue. Okay. It's not sloppy. It's not quite as tight as I'd like, but the uh, epoxy is going to certainly take up that slack without any problem. Okay, so I'm going to round this off just a hair to get rid of this indentation. Actually, I can actually recess this hole a little bit. Uh, with this oak, I don't think I'm going to texture it, but I think I may put a couple of... Uh, I think I may touch up the sanding there and, and come in there with, with a couple of uh, beads. So let me, uh, let, these are from D-Way Tools. These are the same tools that Harvey Meyer uses in his Baskets of Illusion. They're very fine tools for making repetitive beads. So we're just going to come in right here. And just rock it a little bit. Come in right behind it and do another one. Just add just a touch of detail. It's going to go like this. This is going to go like this. And now all I have to do is, is work on that d design of the top. And there we go. You know, as I've said many times, my way is not the only way. It may not even be the right way, but it's a way that i found it works for me, and that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So that's a nice flush fit. Now time to start shaping the top. So if any of... I welcome any suggestions that uh, any of y'all have for uh, a, any better technique on any part of my process, and we'll all learn something. Okay, so now we're going to shape the top. Uh, let me go back and give you a quick reminder of what that diagram looks like. I'll show it here. Uh, but I want the bottom of the top to be about the same diam uh, same thickness as the collar, which is just right at 3 eighths, 3 eighths of an inch. So I've drawn a line there. Now, uh, again, this is cross grain. Normally we go from small to large when we're turning a... Uh, turning cross grain a bowl, but it's hard for me to get back behind here, so I'm going to, uh, it'll be a little more of an effort. I'm going to glue my rings on with 5-minute epoxy. If you're stuck indoors and you got to order it from Amazon, uh, I recommend this Bob Smith 5-minute epoxy. I've, I'm on about my third or fourth uh, 
uh, bottle and have had real good luck with it. You can find it in my wood turning, uh, wood turn, Amazon wood turning store. It'll be a link in the video show notes. On the screen, there'll be a couple of links, one to another urn video I made, and, and also for part two of this video. So, y'all be sure to watch that. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.